So I'm looking for satellite imagery of, well, RVs or campsites. And lo and behold, there are all sorts of RVs out here. So this tells me that this area is probably an area where local boondockers go. And I just turn on the overlight. Ah, and sure enough, it is on DLM land. on the path that I've chosen straight up. Come my way and I'll see you at the top. Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we have been on the road since 2006. Well, you technically 2006, me 2007. And we want to kind of share with you a little bit of a jump back in time to the first time I took Cherie boondocking on uh, what, public land. Well, what we hoped <laughs> was public land. Now, this is 2007. We did have a little bit of mobile internet on our smartphones and we had a Sprint hotspot <laughs> device. We are on our first cross-country trip and we're in Chris's little super tiny 16-foot tab trailer pulled by a Jeep Liberty. Yes, and I had done some research and it's like I found a, a good spot. I kind of out in the middle of nowhere on a few exits off the highway and it's like, I'm, this is fine. We're allowed to stay here overnight for free. This is, this is public land and BLM camping. I had done some of that before and um, I set up there and we put the, the things out and get ready to go and Sheree was a little bit freaked out that somebody might show up with a shotgun. And I mean it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean this concept that you can stay for free in these lands across our nation just was, it was crazy. You know, especially to me, a suburban dweller, it's like, no, you can't just stay for free. That's not right. That's wrong. That's good. Someone's going to come and tell us no. And, and <laughs> We had only the teeniest shred of internet there, and so we're just, Sheree's like, you can't relax and enjoy the spot. We're trying to get online just to find proof that this is public land, that it's okay for us to be here, that this is we're not going to get in trouble. And we couldn't really get enough details online, and so next thing I know, it's like 6.30 in the morning, she's elbowing me awake saying, let's get out of here before they come get us. I'm like, okay, okay, let's go. Oh, and what I <laughs> always have craved was an easy way to go and just look and say, am I on public land or not? Yes. You know, or where can I go to find public lands? And back then, we didn't have great resources like Campendium and FreeCampsites.net. These resources didn't exist. We didn't. I think all states was out, but yeah, there there was a few things, and there. I mean, there were resources online. I had been able to research this this territory a little bit, but it was really not easy and not in your pocket. And um, anyway, that that kind of. You know, we, we got good at boondocking, got good at doing the research. We did a lot of it after that first uh, nervous night. Um, I did, and then we've been on the road ever since. <laughs> and um, as you know, we have tech backgrounds. I was a software developer. You worked in mobile tech. Uh, we still had great careers going on and full-time workloads. Yeah. But, but we started to encounter well, well, the, the challenges in our, our travels and wanted and, to solve them. And and I'd also the the, uh, the iPhones had first come out and I was like, I want to geek out and learn how to program on this thing too. So when they opened the App Store, uh, we took problems from our everyday life and started actually writing apps just for fun. So our first one was an app called State Lines that came to us when we discovered we couldn't buy real beer in, in Kansas. Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, what? There's At least in the be, grocery store. Yeah, so. There's got to be a way to do to understand these rules that change as you go from state to state to state, and that was a perfect little learning app. Is just write a quick reference tool um, to look up the state laws that change as you go state to state to state. And that app is still out there, and it has been kept updated. So <laughs> State Lines is out there now for um, iOS and Android. Um, our next app um, came about two years later, I think. Uh, was when we were camped in a beautiful location, we had prepaid for our campsite, and then we started getting roaming notices on our two cellular carriers that we were out of network and they were both shutting us off. Yes, oh yes, yeah. so I was like, what uh, What do you mean roaming? It doesn't say roaming, and it, we, we, that, that led to us to diving really deep into how these cellular carriers worked and like then wishing, why can't we have a map that's with us that we can know where to go to get faster cellular and when we're in these dreaded roaming areas where you might have different limits that apply 
And we brainstormed that idea. It's like, can we create an app? And we, did. we wrote That's an app called Coverage. Coverage. So that one is still maintained. We now have a mapping partner with Ookla Mosaic that helps us bring in the carrier's coverage maps. You can search by 4G, <laughs> LTE, 3G, roaming coverage. So you can choose what you want. And you can create your own personalized coverage map on your device. And so, <laughs> so a few years later, um, I still had this first boondocking night in my head. And I think I got up before you one morning, mm -hmm. and I just happened, I forget how, I stumbled upon a public domain, public lands source of, of boundary maps. Yeah, so and I woke you up yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's like, I found the U.S. National Atlas, and it's, you know, this detailed maps of the public lands of the U.S., and it's public domain data, and um, can, we, can we use the same map engine we wrote for coverage and create a coverage map for public lands. Years ago. 2014, we rolled that yeah. out. And so we re released US Public Lands, and it's like a really quick app, a quick reference tool that with maps that are in your pocket as opposed to having to go online to look up to see where am I in relation to BLM land and US Forest Service and all these other different layers. The National Atlas that this was all based on was discontinued right about that time as well. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. And then we finally found just a few months ago. Yeah. So we, had, we haven't been able to update it for years because there's no better maps to go by. And the maps are fairly low resolution and, you know, some boundaries had changed and they were fuzzy. They, you couldn't really go more detailed than about one square mile, which when you're trying to determine if you're on public land or not, mm -hmm. isn't really useful. Yeah. Well, it's useful, but it's, it's, it's it, not, it, it does require a lot more um, the local uh, double checking, which is still always important. But um, we recently, well, actually, I think it was last year, we started getting some tips of, hey, there's a, a new database coming from the U.S. Uh, Geological Survey, the, the public, public um, PADAS database. And um, we were able to basically rewrite U.S. public lands with our, our development partner, Hired Guns, to use this new mapping database, and it is much higher resolution. It is being kept up to date, so hopefully we'll be able to do an update every year to keep keep this up to date. And it's just got so much more detail to dive deep, and you can actually see different plot lines, and yet still the maps are entirely local on your device, so you're not relying on an internet connection to see, am I on or where, or where can I hit if yeah, you're doing we're, routing. Um, so that just came out. The release just came out, updated for both the iOS and Android app. It's a free update if you already have the app. If not, you can go get the app. It's only $2.99. Um, yeah. But it's a... A lot of people are looking for you know specific boondocking sites in a database. Well, there are great resources for that with Campendium and free campsites and all stays and uh, RV parking. Those are databases. What we like to use this for is finding the, New ones, places. the ones that aren't the low-hanging fruit, the one that, you know, everyone's heading to the ones that are in the public databases now. We like to scout out one, and we're going to show you how we find campgrounds or boondocking spots using U.S. public lands to find the sites that not everyone knows about. All right, so a few years ago, we were traveling through Idaho. We were out at um, Crater of the Moons National Park, which is out in this area in Arco, and there's also a great nuclear facility to go visit there. And we're on our way to Boise, Idaho, to visit our friends at Wi-Fi Ranger. And we wanted to do some boondocking out in a unique location, and we love waterfront views. So the first thing I did is look for water. Okay, there's some water reservoirs out there. I then turned on the overlays, and the yellow is BLM land. So then I just looked for water that had BLM around it. So we would just zoom in and look around. And, uh, you know, we eventually found Magic Reservoir and saw that there's a lot of waterfront that is in BLM. Now, like I said, this is not a database of boondocking spots. This is for finding the unique one. So what we would then do is we'd hide the overlay and then we would zoom in and look at the satellite view underneath to see, are there any signs of boondocking going on out here? So I'm looking for satellite imagery of, well, RVs or campsites. And lo and behold, there are all sorts of RVs out here. So this tells me that this area is probably an area where local boondockers go. And I just turn on the overlay, ah, and sure enough, it is on BLM land. Um, so then from there, we would continue our research, uh, looking up 
BLM website. Uh, we actually ended up finding the signs when we f went down the road uh, further out, routing out there, I think it was over in this area, that actually said, yeah, camping's allowed here for 14 days. But it wasn't something we were readily able to find on a lot of the resources. So we had a wonderful, wonderful, magical boondocking location out there. And uh, there's also something else now with the new update that you'll be able to do because you probably want to be online too. So, yeah, one of the things that we are now able to do because this is a modern iOS 12 app is support um, split screen multitasking. So we could bring up our app coverage at the same time. And though there's not a way to link them together, it lets you browse um, your coverage maps and your BLM maps um, side by side. And this is all, both these maps are on your device so it can go right there ah it's looking like we got some good verizon signal there to work with good good to know no big gaps in coverage around the magic reservoir so we know we've got a place that'll probably have great uh, cell signal great waterfront views and blm land we can plan this all out in advance scout out always observe the local knowledge um, but we find this to be an incredibly handy tool and it's not just about BLM land. The, we've actually got layers for BLM, U.S. Forest Service, National Parks, National Monuments, Corps of Engineers, Fish and Wildlife Service, Bureau of Reclamation, Tennessee Valley Authority, Department of Defense, you probably don't want to go there, and other federal public lands. So there's all sorts of different layers to dive deep and explore. And it's because the app is so fast because all the maps are local, you can easily browse in and out. And then we have this basic layer up here, which is actually really fun to hit on is this is completely on your device. It's not relying on the underlying maps, but that actually puts the names of the um, each piece of property. So you can say, ah, oh, that's the Department of Energy. Don't want to go there. This is Camas National Wildlife Refuge. Oh, that sounds kind of interesting. Maybe I'll research that further, switch to satellite view. You can see how it actually is now high enough resolution. You can see the agricultural land versus uh, Forest Service land up here, National Wildlife Refuge. and this could be a really interesting place to go, ah, but definitely don't go to that piece of property there. That's a farmer's field. Um, so it makes it really fun and useful to be able to explore your public lands this interactively right on in your pocket or on your tablet. Um, and it is also just a fun tool to fly around and explore and see all the, the, the tiny little spots of public lands that you might find in very interesting places. They're not all just out on the West Coast, too. So it's a fun educational tool as well. And it's not just for boondocking. It's, it's for use of our public lands. You know, each public land, national forest, BLM, monuments, everything else. They have their own rules and regulations on what you can and can't do on them. And if you know what those rules are or what you're trying to do for your use case, you can help, you can use the, the, the app to help you find where to go to head out to do whatever it is you're doing recreationally. Um, app development is fun as a hobby. But it is also a lot of work. But we actually partnered with um, Rob at Hired Gun Software first to do Android versions of all our apps and then actually he took over the keeping up the code side of the iOS apps as well. Being able to offload the actual coding and development side of it has been awesome to allow us to focus on our main income source, which is running the Mobile Internet Resource Center. <laughs> yes, we were facing a, a several years ago, we're like, we just don't have time to keep up with the app. Should we discontinue them while well, we find them useful? Partnering with somebody, outsourcing, that's something we've learned over the years for our own work-life <laughs> You can't balance. do everything. We can't do it all. That and was... we always like to partner with other people who are RVers or cruisers too. So, anyway, we invite you, we just put out this new version of US Public Lands. We don't talk about our apps very much on this channel, but we're pretty excited about this new version because it's the first big update in four years. So definitely check it out in the App Store, search for US Public Lands. Um, give us good reviews if you like the app. We really appreciate that. That helps other people find it. And um, go, yeah, explore. go explore our wonderful public lands out there. There's so much out there. 30% of the nation is public land. Keep that in mind.